There is a reason why sports stadiums around the world went into domes. The weather. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History, now in its second year from the Weather Network in Canada. Today we go back to the date of the hottest game ever actually played in Major League Baseball history. This Day in Weather History. Look, all I can say is this. Around the time of the game we're talking about today, it was actually less than a year away from the opening of Skydome in Toronto. Downtown Toronto was a mess with construction, and the Jays were thrilled that cancelled games, fog, rain, and doubleheaders were finally behind them. Take that, weather! Ha 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 ha! We beat you! While the weather had one last trick up its sleeve. Extreme heat. Over the years, as the climate normals have continued to creep up, there have been fewer and fewer day games because in certain places it's just too hot and it's not safe for fans. As a result, today we have gorgeous retractable dome stadiums in Phoenix, Arizona, as well as Houston and Arlington, Texas. Now I gotta believe that a call from Arlington went back to Toronto and it went went a little bit like this. Uh, Hey guys, yeah, yeah, it's me. We're in Arlington. Listen, two words, air conditioning. In the late 80s, they didn't have the space age, breathable, wick away, futuristic fabrics that we have today. It was a very dense, unbreathable, keep all the moisture in kind of polyester. And oh yeah, also at this time, most teams were still sporting those ridiculous pajama style pullover jerseys that also had no buttons and therefore no possible escape. For the oppressive heat building up inside the uniform. This was especially hard on the Texas Rangers because they still had the onesie at this time. Now consider that the three hottest games on record for MLB all occurred when the Texas Rangers were hosting. The worst of the three hottest temperature games on record was when the Toronto Blue Jays came to Arlington, Texas for a night game and at the 7.39 p.m. opening pitch, the temperature was a disgusting 109 degrees Fahrenheit, 43 degrees Celsius. I repeat, during a night game. The next day's box score read like this. Time of game, two hours, 41 minutes. Thank the gods, because a minute later, and Jays relief pitcher David Wells would have melted down in that baby blue one piece the Jays were still sporting back then. Attendance, 13,642. Again, in heat like that, the smaller the crowd, the less liability potential for Texas. I gotta believe that the amount of fans in the stands was paid attendance versus actual people in seats attendance because the temperatures like that, even I'm eating my tickets. Field condition, dry. And likely set to spontaneously combust. Start time weather, 109 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is precisely why this game makes it to this day in weather history. Welcome to year two of this podcast. Right now, you're listening to the full version of today's story on your favorite podcast provider. But there's also the daily podcast video short. They're shot right here in my podcast recording studio, so you get that perspective. But oftentimes, they will include visuals from that day's event from when it happened in weather history. So after listening to the full story, go check out the podcast video short on television or online anytime at theweathernetwork.com forward slash weather history. But Arlington, Texas had really only had Major League Baseball since 1972 when the second iteration of the Washington Senators moved there after failing yet again. So therefore, it should also be mentioned that a much earlier game in New York back in 1918 claimed to have been played in 110 degree heat. However, if one scans the modern data on hottest days in New York City, one will find that the record high in the Big Apple stands at only 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Something tells me that figure was posted by some unscrupulous bookie who was perhaps looking to make the big score for betting on game time temperature. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up 1919 World Series. Just saying. That's today's Chris May hot take. Oh, and that was also the hottest game in MLB history. August 26th, 1988, this day in weather history.
Hey, do you like the podcast? We'd love to hear from you. If you have an idea, go right now to wherever you're listening to me and rate us, if you would, please. It's on a five-star system, and we would love as many stars as you can afford. So rate us, but then also review us. This way, we can always stay on top of how you'd like to see the show evolve. Then remember to subscribe to this podcast. Click the subscribe or follow button right there on the very same podcast homepage you're listening on. You'll be immediately reminded that the next day is ready to listen to, and you also have access to every episode in the archives. It dates back to June 1st of 2020, so there is a lot that we got to get caught up on on this day in weather history. Tomorrow is August 27th, and for this, we're going to once again dance on a volcano, but this time, we do not have to go back as far as Mount Vesuvius. We are, however, going back 105 years from today's episode to 1883. And one of the most violent eruptions in recent human history, Krakatoa. This day in weather history with me, your host, Chris May.